Hi folks, I'm Prof. Cho. I'm a professor for automation and measurement technology at the University of Applied Sciences camp in the very south of Bavaria. And this is one of the introduction videos to my lecture series of measurement technology at the University of Applied Sciences, which is AI accompanied. So just use the link below to get all the content, all the scripts and all the stuff via a specified special GPT for this lecture. We will start with the introduction of measurement technology now. So what is it all about measurement technology? Just let's write down what we are doing right now and we'll just do some introduction meaning we'll talk about some basic stuff about some definitions we need to know. The first thing which is important to know is what we want to do. So imagine that's the thing we want to know something about. For example, the temperature. So we'll know that this thing holds a temperature, for example. So what do we use for measuring the temperature is, for example, some kind of a sensor. We attach to the stuff which is itself wired to some measuring unit which gives us some measurement value. So the two things which are important for us is the measurement quantity and the measurement value. We want to know that measurement quantity and we won't be able to know it in any which way. It's always unknown. It's, it's that value we want to get via our measurement value. But that value always, always only will approximate the measurement quantity, which is the physical thing. It's attached to the physical object, the me measurement object. That's important to know. So what? It's always the same principle we want to know is, for example, the temperature. That's our wish. And on the other side, we only get the measurement. Having said that, it's quite clear that it's never possible to get an exact value. So we always have some errors over here, which is a core part of measurement technology. There will be a certain chapter only about errors and measurement errors and the handling of them. On the other side, um, this value has to be expressed in some way. And the typical way is when that's our quantity, let's keep that star over there, we express it as multiples of some unit. And that's what we'll talk about some more on the, in the next few minutes. Um, what is a unit? How is it defined? How can we use it? What it is all about? The idea of a unit is quite simple. Historically seen, it's about comparing and explaining some things to other people. Imagine you want to sell a big bucket of beer to someone. You have to somehow express the volume of how much you want to sell to him. For that reason and for that purpose, we use units. That's the simple explanation. It's not about having the, the physics of the universe um, proposing us some units. No, it's about us getting an idea of what sizes we have and comparing them. So in principle, those, those basic units are human made in the first step. The funny thing about that is that the physics nature gives, um, gives us some ideas, proposes us some basic units which are the most sensible ones and which occur in every which way in, in our nature and in our environment. So what, what, what are those basic units? Wipe that stuff away. Just leave the thing over here. We have seven of them. I'll just write them down because they are important as such because those are the units we want to talk about. It's the most important ones is meters, seconds, kilogram, ampere, and 
in the end Kelvin most of the time as temperature. Those are the units you are all common with. You know temperature, you know distance, you know time. Then there come along some other units, moles, chemistry. It's the amount of material of a certain stuff type and candela which is used for radiation. The two ones below, use them whenever you need them. Um, but we will focus on the five above because they are the most common ones and we want to reduce to some core things in measurement technology. So now the first guys of you will say, hey, no, there's more than a meter, there's an inch, there's a an, an foot and whatsoever. That's true. And that's how it all came up, you know. There were lists, long lists of feet, measurement feet in history, which were all comparable but not the same. That's bad stuff. Why? Because whenever a foot of England is brought to America, it hasn't has to be the same foot, historically seen. So, talking about those seven units, there was some convention where people from all over the world came together and said, let's have those seven units. There's no reason why the meter was chosen. It, it could have been inch. It was just the outcome of this conference. So, again, it's human-made. It's the humankind which defines all of those measurement quantities. It's not something special. Nature doesn't think in meters, it doesn't think in, in seconds or whatsoever. That's just what we made up to get a glimpse into nature. And that's one more reason for those units. They make it possible for us to extend our vision onto the nature. Meaning, for example, when we use meters, we can scale down to nanometers, for example. And by that, we can explain things about atoms. We can see atoms. We can't feel atoms, but we can talk about them using units. We can talk about large scales, the expansion of the universe, light years, whatsoever. We can't, we can't have a glimpse into what the light year is, but we can talk about it using units. And that's the main reason why those units are so important and are a central part of measuring things. because. Whenever you get a measurement, you want and you have to know about the units that measurement is given to you. That's the first important thing. The next important thing is you not only have to know about the units, but you also have to know about the errors. That's the reason why we'll get an extra chapter only for errors, because think of a me measurement, a simple measurement just giving you the value 20 degree Kelvin or let's say 20 degree Celsius so we have room temperature and that is given to you by somebody you don't know. That means you know nothing because you don't know if it's something he felt like he felt oh it's a not cold but not too hot day so we're about 20 degrees and he was telling you that stuff and said yeah it's 20 degrees. Now in the worst case you think that 20 degrees degrees are a very exact measurement, um, in minimum exact to the first um, digit after the, the, the comma. So we, I can assume it's exact for 0 0.1 degrees Celsius and that's bullshit in that case. On the other hand, somebody tells you the temperature and he measured it very exactly. So he did everything to get the best out of his measurement of the temperature and now give it to you and you want to reproduce something but you don't use the same amount of work to get your temperature the right way and only adjust it to one degree Celsius and the other guy did it to 1.10 degrees Celsius and you're wondering about why your measurement doesn't work. That's the other reason why the error is an essential part of of a measurement. A measurement without error is worth nothing. Basically you can't use it. You can't use it. That's it. Okay, so 
some little details about um, the units we have. Um, explaining where do they come from. It's for seconds was the most complex task to do. Nowadays the second is the most well-defined basic unit, I think, because it's based on the radiation frequency exerted by a certain type of stuff, by a certain atom. That's the atomic clocks we know all about. They are exciting some atoms to um, exert some radiation. That radiation is, is measured and now all the, the gaps between the periods of that radiation are counted and when you are counting to a certain amount it's like two uh, billion and so on and so on periods we have to count that's a second and that's just how it is defined. We say that amount of periods of that radiation is one second. That's it, period. Not talking about anything else but just defining it. Nobody has a feeling for a second or something like that. It's just, it's just, it's a, a time a human can recognize very good. But the definition, it's just all about, bam, I'm telling you, count two billion periods of that radiation and that's your second. That's very well defined if everybody holds on to it and doesn't change it. So the second is very well defined. Now the distance, we have something which told us Einstein, it's the speed of light. That's constant in every which way you could imagine. So let's just say a meter is the distance light travels in a certain time. Then we use that very well defined second to define a distance, a meter, and that again is very well defined. Talking about that definitions, those were nowadays defined in 2019 in a new conference. And now all of those constants are based on natural constants, meaning some stuff like the speed of light or the Boltzmann constant or any other constant which is out there, which is given by nature. And now people just define count to that and that value to get your basic unit, to get that basic thing which you can use to compare and to think and to talk about measurements. Yeah, um, that way those units are nowadays well defined and what is done to use those definitions um, is not that simple at that point because imagine you have that second defined using an atomic clock. It's an expensive thing to have an atomic clock. It's absolutely expensive to have an atomic clock. Not everybody can ha have an atomic clock. So what is done? We have some of those well-defined basic units in the way they were defined using, for example, the periods you have to count um, of a ra radiation within an atomic clock. That atomic clock is a basic unit convention which is built up on several places in the world, so there are several atomic clocks in the world, you can go to and get your value of a second. That value of a second normally is transferred to some other measurement device, some other unit device which can represent a second very well. Meaning for example you use a quartz clock or your handy clock or, or, or your cell phone clock or anything you want to have that second as a unit more usable within your pocket for example. And now at that point we can start to get measurements, measurement values. Because not using an atomic clock makes it much more easier but at the same time this thing here over here the atomic clock it's a definition. So there are no errors in principle because we define it that way. The errors come along with our measurement device of the periods. 
with our measurement device for counting the periods, for measuring the radiation. So there are some errors also. I just cross them out. On the other hand, at that point, you for sure have errors, which are defined by your adapted measurement device and which you have to carry along to your measurement. So again, the errors are the most important stuff about a measurement. So that are the basics for now. The next part for the introduction will be about some details about measurement devices and other things. So we can then directly dive into, in chapter two, into the errors, which are the, as I said, most important part uh, in measurement technology. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the content I presented to you, feel free to watch the next videos. To the end, feel free to ask questions so I can produce some more specific videos answering your questions.